Hey guys, it's Sandeep from Everless and welcome to our review of the Realme XT smartphone. So this is going to be the first smartphone to be launched in India with a 64 megapixel camera and there's a quad camera set up at that. And although the Redmi Note 8 Pro has the title for being the world's first camera phone with 64 megapixels of resolution, this is going to beat it to India as it's going to be launched very soon, that is on the 13th of September. Now, before we get started, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And also, if you end up liking this video, please do leave a thumbs up as well. Now, let's get started. Now to start things off, I'd like to make one thing clear. I've seen a lot of people ask this question before in the comment section and all over the internet. The Realme XT is actually a different device and it's a different lineup of device compared to the Realme X. So the term T does not signify an upgrade over the X like it does in say the OnePlus devices nomenclature. So the XT is a camera centric lineup. It's going to be uh, separate from the X lineup. And that's why you see some of these differences, including the fact that, you know, the X had a pop-up camera, which meant that there's no notch or any sort of obtrusion on the display, but this has a water drop notch. So that's the reason why you see this difference in approach uh, in terms of the design philosophy, etc. And for example, in the future, if they're going to launch a successor to the XT, it'll be called XT2 perhaps, and the X would be called X2. And these are not in the same lineup. So adding on to what I told earlier, the XT has more in line in terms of design compared to the 5 Pro as opposed to the Realme X itself. So if you look at both these devices side by side, they would seem very similar or if not identical to the untrained eye. And the differences only start showing up particularly when you look at the back. So first thing you'll notice is that there's a difference in the pattern and the way the colors are made. So there's a diamond cut pattern on the Realme 5 Pro and even though it has a gradient, the gradient is done in a different way. It's not as flashy as the XT. The XT has a really nice gradient design that gives out different colors, it goes from green to blue to purple based on how the light hits it. And it looks much more elegant and better. The other difference is that you don't have a fingerprint scanner at the back on the XT because it has an in-display fingerprint scanner. You also see a 64 megapixel branding here as opposed to the 48 megapixel branding on the 5 Pro and also some additional branding beside the camera unit. The last subtle difference is that there's this yellow sort of marker uh, and uh, accent on the power button itself which the 5 Pro doesn't have and that's there on the Realme X also so this sort of gives the premium feeling again to the XT. Uh, now in terms of the basic uh, size and handling and everything the materials use it remains very similar it's slightly larger than the Realme 5 Pro but it still handles well despite the large screen it still feels compact and easy to hold and handle it's still polycarbonate so of course it is more prone to scratches so you would need to use a case but it is at least less prone to breakage compared to glass now at the front you get Gorilla Glass 5 uh, the difference with the 5 Pro is that this is now a super AMOLED panel and hence why you get an in-display fingerprint scanner as well. It's still a water drop notch but there is a slight improvement even in terms of screen size. So this is 6.4 inches compared to the 6.3 inches of the Realme 5 Pro. Now I don't know if you guys can tell also but I couldn't tell at first when I started using the uh, XT I couldn't tell that the screen size was essentially bigger it felt more or less the same to be honest and unless you compare it side by side or look at the spe spec sheet you won't notice that there is a 0.1 inch bigger screen here so practical benefits of the bigger screen are almost none in the sense of course the bigger screen is better but you can't really tell the difference because it's that small but in terms of being a super AMOLED panel, there is a huge difference, uh, both in terms of the contrast ratio, the colors, and even the sunlight legibility. Now, this display is not as bright as some of the other displays, uh, some of the other super AMOLED displays, and the sunlight legibility is also a bit on the lower side as a result compared to other AMOLED displays, but it's still much better than the 5 Pro and any other IPS panel out there. So overall, it still looks good. The water drop notch is not the perfect solution, I guess, some people would definitely want to go for, uh, you know, pop-up camera or anything that prevents having a notch at all. But still not bad, the bezels are overall pretty minimal and you get Corning Gorilla Glass 5 as well at the front. 
Now moving on to the internals, the XT has a Snapdragon 712 chipset which is same like the Realme 5 Pro. It comes in 4, 6 or 8 GB of RAM variant and has 64 or 28 gigs of internal storage. Now the storage is UFS 2.1 and RAM is DDR4 and you also get a triple card slot with a dedicated micro SD card slot in it and overall the performance has been quite fluid it has been great there's no issue in terms of multitasking etc and this comes with android pi out of the box and it also has color os i can't wait to actually get realme's own os on this because i heard it's much lighter uh, and much snappier similar to what you would get on oneplus devices uh, i'm not sure when that's going to come but i'm definitely looking forward to it i personally would throw on a nova launcher on here uh, you know when I'm using it as my personal device but during the process of reviewing I was using color OS and it's not too bad but then again it's not my go-to choice for a UI or skin. It comes with L1 widewind so HD streaming of content is possible on this device through services such as Netflix and Prime. So now on to the main reason why people are interested in the XT and that is the camera setup. So Realme was one of the first brands to introduce the quad camera setup and this continues the same trend. In fact, it's very similar to the setup used by the Realme 5 Pro and uh, it has the 2 megapixel depth sensor. It has a 2 megapixel macro camera as well as the 8 megapixel 1 4th inch 1.12 micron uh, ultra wide angle camera. And the main difference here compared to the Realme 5 Pro is basically the primary camera. So the 5 Pro had a 48 megapixel camera. This has a 64 megapixel camera. It's a Samsung GW1 sensor. It's a 1 by 1.72 inch sensor, f1.8 aperture. And it's actually quite good in terms of performance from what we tested so far. Uh, we'll be doing camera review to give you the detailed impressions as well as the camera comparisons with other devices in the segment to let you know how it stacks up and how the first uh, you know, uh, implementation of the 64 megapixel camera, at least the first one available in India, stacks up against the 48 megapixels and the other high end sensors and the like. So, up front, you get uh, a 32 megapixel camera, it's an F2 camera, IMX471 from Sony, uh, and uh, you know, it also supports camera to API. So, Google camera mod should kind of improve the quality, but then again, like the first 48 megapixel camera phones that came out earlier this year, it should take some time to get a proper G cam working on this, at least one that has been tweaked to give the best output from the sensor. But I'm sure we'll get there and we'll be one of the first ones to let you know about the same as well. Now, in terms of the audio quality, the speaker is loud. Uh, it's a mono experience. It's fairly loud. I won't say it's the loudest out there, but it's still loud enough that I can enjoy content from it without any issue. Headphone jack is again good. There's plenty of loudness. It's even able to power higher impedance headphones with ease. And overall, the quality is pretty good. Now onto the battery itself. It comes with the 4000 mAh battery. Uh, it gives you around seven hours of screen on time, give or take 30 minutes. Uh, depending on your usage and it also charges uh, to full 100% in 1 hour 20 minutes using the bundle 20 watt Vogue charger. The in-display fingerprint scanner is made possible thanks to a Super AMOLED display. Uh, it's fast and accurate and in fact is better than some of the other implementations even in flagship phones such as the S10, S10 Plus and especially at this price point that's saying a lot. Uh, you can customize the animation that you want to your own liking. There's quite a bit to choose from. Uh, and onto the face unlock feature, which is done using the front facing camera. So the face unlock uh, is also fast, also accurate, and it works fairly well even in low light conditions. You can also use the option to compensate the screen brightness when in extremely dim situations. And it also has the wake uh, to, I mean, raise to wake feature, which can also be used coincidentally with the uh, face unlock and it becomes easier if you just take it up and then it unlocks the phone automatically It doesn't work in 360 degrees and I wish it does because especially say you're lying in bed etc You would want it to work as easy as possible Xiaomi phones have that and that's one thing I missed in this but again not a deal breaker as such I'm not sure how many of you had seen my Realme X review, but I had mentioned in the video that it would be my new go-to smartphone to recommend to people under rupees 20,000 now, I think that's about to change with the Realme XT and uh, let me explain why. So the Realme XT was great. Uh, there was a notchless uh, screen experience, 6.5 inch Super AMOLED that was great. 
uh, you got good cameras uh, you got uh, fast charging etc but uh, what it didn't have was as versatile a camera setup as the realme 5 pro and the realme 5 pro was quite a bit cheaper as well so people who didn't care as much about the screen but still wanted a great camera experience could go for the 5 pro and save a bit of money now the xt is coming along this combines the good aspects of both and also improves on certain things so for example it has the uh, same versatile camera setup the ultra wide angle the macro etc of the 5 pro but it improves on the primary sensor with the 64 megapixel sensor and now when you look at the x side of things you get the super amoled display from the realme x of course this is 0.1 inch smaller but then again 0.1 inch is not all that different as i showcased with the 5 pro and the realme xt so 0.1 inch smaller and it has a notch but then again that isn't a deal breaker and you also end up getting better battery life than the realme x so it is going to be priced i think between both these devices uh, if that happens this will be my new recommendation under rupees 20k you get great screen experience great camera experience good battery life um, you know good audio quality uh, overall good design of course some people may miss the glass at the back but at least is is not going to break and the only other thing i can think of is realme os it can't get here soon enough but until then you can use a launcher but yeah this has now become my go-to device in terms of recommendation i hope you guys like this video do let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below thanks for watching see you again in the next one